Hey, what's up everybody? Hammerheart Band of Reviews here once again doing another discography countdown on one of my favorite bands. Today we are going to be talking about the death metal titans Vital Remains. What can you say about these guys? Been around a really long time. Haven't put out any new material in quite some time. I'm not sure if that's even something that's going to be happening or if they're completely done now. I believe they still tour every now and then, but I'm not even positive on that. I mean, these guys were around since the early 90s, had quite a few lineup changes, different vocalists, but put out a lot of really classic death metal albums. I feel like they're kind of an underrated band. They did gain a little more notoriety in the later stages of their career because Glenn Benton from DSI joined on vocals. That really got them some more exposure and they put out a couple really solid albums with him. But I'm just going to run through all their albums from my least favorite down to my favorite. They do have six studio albums. I'll start off by saying I don't think they have any bad albums. I thoroughly enjoy all of these. So this one was kind of tough to put together. But nonetheless, I'll still, something's got to come last. So I'll just get right into it. And let's see what that is. So coming up last in sixth spot is the debut, Let Us Pray, from 1992. This is a stellar death metal debut album. I do not want to knock it by putting it last. That is not saying this is a bad album at all. I really like it. I still like listening to it. It's a little more rough around the edges compared to their later work. Definitely the solos aren't nearly as technical. The drumming's not as good. But nonetheless, this is still a solid slab of death metal. Some great tracks on here. War in Paradise, A Pure Unholiness. Like, Vital Remains just loves their satanic imagery and satanic lyrics. Some of it's a little bit over the top, but nonetheless, it's some solid satanic death metal. And yeah, don't write it off just because it's really old and it's the debut. It's not as polished, but this is still a pretty solid album. I'd still give this one like a 7 out of 10. So you'll see all six of their albums are at least 7 out of 10 or higher. That's pretty fucking good. Not too many bands can say that. And let's just move this right along. Up next at number five is their second album, Into Cold Darkness from 1995. This one I feel does go leaps and bounds above the debut. The songwriting got much better. It's still pretty much the same lineup, same vocalist as on the debut, but they started drawing out the songs a little bit more. They're a little bit longer, definitely more interesting. There's a little more uh, variation in the vocals too, not just all low. He goes high a little bit too, which I always like in some, this kind of death metal is to have a little bit of variation. Favorite songs on here, Under the Moon's Fog. The title track, Into Cold Darkness is great. Uh, Descent Into Hell is a really cool one. There's all in all another really solid death metal album. This one's more like borderline 7.5 out of 10. <laughs> 7.5, that doesn't mean fuck all, but 7.5 out of 10 is what I'm trying to say. Let's move this right along. Coming in next at number four is their most recent release from 2007, Icons of Evil. This features Glenn Benton from Deicide on vocals. And yeah, like I'll talk about the preceding albums a little bit later on. This one, I only have it at fourth because I feel like it doesn't quite match the albums that were right before it, but that is not taken away from this. The melodies and souls on this album are absolutely insane. Um, David Suzuki is the guy that does the solos, the drumming, like the blast beats. They're a little bit over the top on here. It's pretty much just relentless. Um, but like David Suzuki is a fucking genius. It's so talented the way he can play the solos and fucking just match it with the most intense drumming. Glenn Benton's vocals on here are absolutely awesome with the low and the high and blending them together. Tony Lazaro is the main man behind Vital Remains. He's like the only guy that's been in it the whole fucking time. He's a rhythm guitarist, writes all the songs, and he's just got a knack for writing some really catchy death metal tunes. My favorite tracks on here, Born to Rape the World, Hammer Down the Nails, the title track Icons of Evil is really great, In Infamy is a really fucking great one too. Just all in all, really solid fucking album. It's only ranked fourth because I like the other three a touch better. So let's move that right along into number three from 1997 is the album Forever Underground. This one featured a new vocalist after the first two albums. I can't remember his name, but is definitely an improvement. And the songwriting is definitely a step above those first two albums as well. David Suzuki, this was his first album where he joined. And you can really hear it, like the influence that he had on this band. 
Um, he's got there's even like some neoclassical guitar parts that he throws in there, and they're just really fucking beautiful. There's really catchy riffs on here. Once again, the solos and guitar are just great. The drumming is awesome. Favorite tracks on here: the title track "Forever Underground," "I Am God," "Eastern Journey." I feel like this is a really underrated album in terms of what Vital Remains has put out. Everyone always talks about the Glenn Benton albums, but no one really mentions Forever Underground, and they should because this album is a fucking death metal classic. People need to hear this album. If you've never heard Vital Remains, I'd say Forever Underground's a great album to start with. You can hear their more crazier stuff, more modern, progressive, melodic stuff later on. I'm not that that's not a good place to start either, but this is good to kind of bridge the two eras of the band, like their very early, just straight ahead death metal days into the more melodic stuff. This kind of brings both together and it's a really fucking awesome album. You need to give it a shot. That just leaves two. Coming in at number two from year 2000 is Dawn of the Apocalypse. This once again had a different vocalist. I think his name was Thorn. He only did the one album and then was gone. I really fucking dig his vocals. They're really awesome. And the songwriting on here is just great too. It's kind of in the same vein as Forever Underground and then the albums that followed it. But this maybe goes a step above Forever Underground with some of the rhythm riffs. The solos are definitely a step above. These longer tracks. The drumming is just absolutely awesome on here too. The title track, Dawn of the Apocalypse, absolutely amazing. Black Magic, Curse, Behold the Throne of Chaos is probably my favorite song on the album. Just great fucking riffs, really catchy ass shit on here. Absolutely amazing album, definitely deserves a listen. And that just leaves one. My favorite Vital Remains album from 2003 is Dechristianized. This was the first Glenn Benton album and when he joined, it just took them to the next level. I mean, he, he, I don't think he had much to do with the songwriting. He just did the vocals. But nonetheless, it injected some life into the band. And David Suzuki and Tony Lazaro just playing off each other. Like, Tony Lazaro wrote such sick fucking riffs on here. But then David Suzuki's solos and melodies are so insane on this album. Like, this is a fucking masterpiece. I don't want to call it melodic death metal. This is still just like really aggressive, brutal death metal, but with so much melody in it and in the solos, it's still got that like classical tinge to it. It's just fucking like beautiful, but brutal at the same time. It's really fucking great. If you've never heard this, please go do yourself a favor and listen to it. Favorite songs on here, the title track, Dechristianized. Rush of Deliverance is definitely my favorite song on the album. There's just a melodic guitar part in there that is so fucking gorgeous. It's so catchy. At War With God is really good. Just all in all, this is close to a 10 out of 10 album. I'll just give it a 9.5. I feel like I give too many albums 10 out of 10 these days. This maybe isn't a perfect album, but 9.5 out of 10 is fucking solid. This is an absolutely amazing album. And yeah, that's my Vital Remains ranking. Let me know down below what your favorite Vital Remains albums are. What'd you think of my list? Give me a like, give me a subscribe. Until next time, have my heart matter abuse out.